I'm tired of obscure poetry. How it always seems more complex and beautiful just because it hides behind a wall of thesaurism. Men. Modern progressive men spoke of beauty that was born out of simplicity. Words of gentle, tender kindness. I don't need to be compared to an ocean or spoken to like a newborn babe. The world needs a simple sincerity. One that strikes us, not at the heart we imagine we have from years of education, but the heart we were born with, the one we can't control or fully comprehend. That is why great art is so rare. The pieces we value may have been painstakingly crafted, but at its core it was an unconscious expression of something that needed to be. It happened, then it was explained. We never grow tired of stories of love won and lost, of family and friendship, because there is something eternal in simplicity. Something new to be seen. It's the glaringly complex that is shallow and short-lived. I think that's why I spend so much time with Nicholas. Because he doesn't overcomplicate things. You know, he simply says what needs to be said, and he does what needs to be done. He's not simple, but he's simple. I don't agree with your premise. Sometimes complex things are really quite actually complex. And sometimes simple people are really simple. Like a rocket ship or the Earth. Both of those things are incredibly complex. I just don't think you're thinking this through. The Earth is where we live. It just is. And <laughs> a rocket ship blasts off into space. A child can understand it. No. Jordan, you are being completely ridiculous. So you're saying Nicholas is dumb? No. I'm saying you're being ridiculous. Nicholas is fine. I don't know. Nick is Nick. Nicholas is Nicholas is. Nothing is ever that simple. Don't come in, I'm naked. Probably haven't been naked since Thursday. Oh, take a shower. Well, I'm naked under these clothes. Shut up. You know, speaking of shut, my door was, and then it wasn't, and now it is again. That whole time I didn't hear a knock. You also didn't hear a key turn. Lock your doors, wouldn't happen. Well. What are you doing today? I wanted to finish off some proposals. See if we can get some startup grant money for materials. Seth wants to start shopping the prototype around sometime soon. That's cool. You should come to a movie with me. A matinee? Or a bunch of movies. There's not even enough mediocre movies to spend a whole day at the theater, let alone good movies spending money on. No. No, I'm not going to... I'm not going to spend the whole day at the theater sneaking into movies. I'm not a 12-year-old punk. Suit yourself. Craving for rom-coms and mediocre kids' films satiated? 
Have you had your giddy thrill for the day? Um, one can never have too many giddy thrills in one day. But I have seen enough of you. Well, if you've had your fill, what are we gonna do for the rest of the evening? Well, actually, I am going downtown to go with the guy that I met at an exhibition last week. Remember when I went to um the gallery opening on Stratford and Main? Yeah, well, we're going downtown to grab dinner and we're gonna drive around in his Audi. Smacks of dumb money and class. Yeah, I wouldn't pass that up. I bet he's got steely blue eyes that could melt Italian marble. They're green. But yeah, I, uh, I'm pretty sure I saw the blue a little bit when he uh, looked at it. Well, you know, you'd have to take me someplace really nice, you know. Take your car at the door and they give you free bread and... Waiter's got a pencil mustache. But no, I mean... Why not just continue the day and just, you know, call him, tell him something came up and... Uh, I can make you dinner. down from my place. Well, I was I was thinking just wondered where is it? I saw everything like this. I am what I do. I am what I think. I am what I feel. I am my choices. All loosely connected, these are things that have bearing on what I am, and yet, individually do not make up what is essentially me. My actions are what people see. It's what they think of me. And the consequences of my actions inform what I am to do next. But I don't always like my actions, and they don't always come out the way I want them to. What I think I did and what I did are not always the same thing. They're all driven by what I think are choices. But I don't always have a choice. I don't really choose how I feel. I don't choose who I love, just how I love, or if I express that love in a direct and meaningful way. I don't really know where I'm going with myself and whatever, because all things considered, I don't really know how I feel, except that it usually involves some sort of shame and disappointment. I know I want success. I know I want happiness. I know I want to want for nothing. I know I love. I know all this, but ultimately I feel guilt. Lots of it. Guilt for wanting something but feeling too lazy to do it. Guilt for wasting my life. Guilt for not appreciating what I have. Guilt for wanting friendship to mean love. Guilt for not making myself into a person who can overcome these things. And as a creature of guilt, these things make me ecstatically miserable. When you admit these things to yourself, you feel no drive to change it. It's an admission, a release. And yet, the nature of guilt never lets you really settle in it. You forgot to lock your door again. Well, also I forgot to knock. <laughs> hey, creepy. That's the floor. Jordan, do you ever listen to yourself? It's so nice of you to join in the conversation. You should get off the floor. 
or me for that matter. I mean, honestly, really listen. Uh, Nicholas, I think you're being a little dramatic. I was thinking of going to the gallery to scope out some more dumb money, and you should get out of the house, so... No. I don't suppose you do. You should really try. I can come back. No, no, no! Do you ever try to understand the effects of your actions on people. That maybe that guy with a half ton of dumb money wanted more than just an evening of banal conversation and a $300 tab. The guy wanted to take me out. I wasn't going to refuse him just because he might think it's something it's not. People aren't here for you to work through your thought experiments, Jordan. Regardless of how much of a meathead this guy is, he still has feelings. And just because this week you think you can accept any invitation without acknowledging the subtext doesn't mean it's okay. There's social graces and you can't just change or ignore them without some sort of blowback. Nicholas, you haven't even met the guy. He's fine, and if he's not, then he'll go buy himself another TV and he'll be fine. We all have something to work through. You especially. I can work myself out on my own. You're not working yourself out though. You're working everybody else out. You address every problem except for the ones that affect you personally. Whether or not people need to be single or coupled or simple or selfish is irrelevant. Because you consistently fail to grasp the simple concepts that we've built our silly constructs on. Ideas such as empathy and self-awareness and honesty. Honesty? Honesty is a myth. It's a... At best, it's a guess at what our feelings should be and at worst, it's a trap for what we think we should be. You're really not getting it. And you don't... You don't become a whole person by redefining the world and then making the world bow to your new ideal. You do it by coming to terms with who you are and what you want. And if you have to work this hard to make people understand you, then you're probably doing something wrong. It's gotten into you. I woke up, and I'm tired, and I really don't want to deal with this anymore. Deal with what? I want you to leave. No. Not to explain mm, what's please. going on. I don't want you here anymore. I'm not going anywhere. I want you gone. Nicholas, you're not making any sense. I don't want you to ever come back. No. Until you explain yourself. 